Hello. So, we will be continuing our discussion on computer network and internet protocol. So, we have started discussion on data link layer. So, uh, overview of the things we will again look at some of the basic concepts and then we will go slowly to little me, uh, little bit uh, specific things which we want to discuss. right? So, as, as we have uh, discussed in our earlier uh, lecture that data link layer is a layer 2 uh, position of OSI and also TCP IP uh, protocol stack. It plays an important role because finally, uh, the, uh, for transmitting any data, the data link layer address need to be resolved. Right? So, and finally, uh, and end of the things we require a physical media WAD or wireless to transmit the data from one source to another uh, from the source to destination or hop to hop or data link layer manifestation sometimes we call is a hop to hop uh, manifestation. Right? So, this, uh, this is important to uh, understand the different uh, field, uh, different functionalities or mechanism, mechanisms of data link layer. Though, whenever we are writing as a application uh, network application, writing an application application or working as a network admin, admin not primarily for application etcetera, we may not be much always bothered about the data link layer. We are mostly at the higher layer protocols and type of things, but uh, to understand things it may help us in optimizing uh, at different levels. And these days as we have seen that lot of cross layer issues are coming up or cross layer optimization uh, challenges are, are coming up, lot of research going on cross layer optimizations which taking care that not that individually things, but taking the stack or a portion of the stack together uh, the, uh, that it is important to understand. right? Because uh, our all protocol things were primarily why we made stack because that one, one layer should work independently and it should only bother about its upper layer and the down layer. Right? So, this, this ex, it is extremely nice or uh, for interoperability between different devices, different uh, protocols and type of things. But in doing so, more you make it flexible, more you lose on performance or maybe there is a compromisation of the performance. So, that days people are looking at the cross layer optimization in some of the cases like quality of service or even type of services, security, overall network management etcetera, this called cross layer things optimization things come up and several applications may demand a not only one layer, but a optimized different layer uh, type of things may be multimedia application or some secured application over the things etcetera. So, those things are are uh, some of the aspects which which we look into this uh, uh, in case of a uh, your uh, data link layer. Um, data link layer for, or that aspects is important to understand that why things are there. Right? So, just to recap one, with one slide what we have seen that uh, data link layer is primarily uh, consists of two things one is LLC or logical link control another in the medium access control. So, LLC is primarily responsible for uh, upper layer uh, uh, negotiation or upper layer connectivity etcetera, whereas the MAC is primarily with the physical layer. right? So, LLC is as LSAP or the LLC service access point and on other sense that MAC also have a MAC address sometimes we call a hardware address type of hardware addresses, address those are at the uh, at the MAC uh, level. right? And uh, if we look at the IEEE 802 standard, it encompasses both this uh, layer 2 and the physical layer uh, stuff. Now, uh, if we look at the generic MAC frame format, right? so MAC layer it forms a frame. So, what is the MAC rate format? It is payload is the LNC PDU, right? protocol data unit which it gets from the LNC is its payload and it addresses the source, source MAC address and uh, destination MAC address and there are some control MAC control is at the front of it. At the end it gives the CRC or the redundancy check field to find out whether there is a transmission error or not by the uh, end, end station or the next stop station where the things are being transmitted. right? 
So, that is important. So, we have a MAC control contains the control information of the function of the MAC protocol that is priority level etcetera. Destination MAC address the address of the physical attachment point of the LAN for this frame right. So, it where it is uh, where it is connected right. So, your uh, number of cases if the if the if your PC or, or laptop say wired connection connected to a switch. So, that is the destination for this the next stop is the switch right and uh, <coughs> if it is a wireless then also the destination is the wireless access point is for it because it is a hop to hop things right and uh, there is a source MAC address the source physical attachment point of the LAN of this thing. So, attachment point means where the it is connecting to the network interface card. So, the uh, so that is important. So, what uh, and in a, another is the LLC the LLC data from the next higher layer right. So, the whatever the data it uh, gets from the next higher layer is the LLC PDU things are there and CRC is the redundancy cyclic redundancy check field used to check if the transmission error has occurred or not. So, at the destination check whether the CRC checking is there right. <coughs> So, we will see that if uh, if we we can if we can discuss on the CRCF time permits in some some uh, later lectures, but otherwise you can refer any standard book. Now, important is that that I I have a frame which is which is on the standard and uh, and as as we understand that the for this we require a uh, physical device network adapter adapter card or uh, what we say LAN card uh, where you have uh, you can plug, plug in your WAD RJ45 type of cable or if it is a wireless your wireless uh, antenna or that uh, trans receiver things will should be there or if it is a something other things like uh, some other things token ring or type of things those interfaces will be there. That card fits into our devices it is laptop, PC, server whatever right and it contains a physical address right physical address or mac address or hardware address sometimes so it comes with the manufactured manufactured things so it comes with the address which is embedded into the things right so that is that is important though there are uh, things we talk about cloning of mac address etc uh, we are not going to those uh, issues or complications uh, as of now this mac address is unique that means any device having a interface card has a unique MAC address across the world right. So, uh, so what we require to do, do we need to have a logical connection between the source and destination from the IP address then every hop it needs to know what is the next IP address resolve the MAC address push it to this MAC to this MAC because the layer 2 only understands up to the layer 2 things that means up to MAC layer LLC layer it understand layer 2 does not understand IP etcetera right because that is a higher level thing. So, that need to be addressed need to be resolved need to be resolved as uh, by a by some protocol we know that there is a there is a protocol called ARP address resolution protocol with allows this is uh, which maps this IP address to this MAC address right and then goes on doing those things. Now, uh, MAC techniques uh, or MAC approaches can be one is synchronous a specific capacity is dedicated to a connection same approach as in circuit switch uh, FDM that is uh, or TDM that frequency domain multiplexing or time domain multiplexing. So, not optimal for the LAN or metropolitan area network because the need of the station may be unpredictable right. So, you can uh, synchronous and reserved things may not be dedicated connection may not be very appropriate other on the other way we have the asynchronous capacity is allocated dynamically dynamic fashion in response to the demand. When the demand comes it is the capacity is allocated subdivided uh, or you can see that we can have it with three approaches one is round robbing I go on getting things after every particular time slot it can be some reservation strategy it is reserved for the things or there can be a contention right I contain for that slot and get the things done. So, round robin in case of a round robin uh, for asynchronous MAC techniques which is more predominant uh, asynchronous thing. So, uh, in case of round robin what we say that each station is 
in turn grant the right to transmit right so it is not that uh, it is uh, fixed so each station get its turn to right to transmit after each station finishing transmitting it passes the right to transmit to the next station in the logical sequence right so once transmission there it goes to the next efficient technique when many stations have data to transmit over an extended period of time if the everybody is wants to transmit it is efficient right but if there are station which are nothing to transmit then also it is getting a turn and it is a wastage of the things right so it is it becomes efficient when everybody wants to transmit or the data are more or less in uniform manner we want to transmit and type of things it becomes much easier a hey, much efficient otherwise it will be a loss of uh, things like it goes on getting turns but nothing to be transmitted whereas in the in case of a reservation for it is more uh, appropriate for some of the traffic where uh, like stream traffic like voice bulk file transfer etc time on the medium is divided into slot like synchronous uh, tdm a station wishing to transmit reserve the slot for extended period so it is it, it has a it in case of steady streaming traffic you have a quite a volume of data to be transmitted so you reserve the slot to be transmitted right uh, a priori before transmitting right and the third one which is content is contents uh, contention based uh, technique that is for busty traffic short sporadic transmission such as interactive terminal host traffic and type of things which is where which are predominant in case of our normal network traffic no control is exercised on the to determine whose turn it is right so there is no uh, no control on the things simply to implement an efficient uh, for light loads so it is it is something contents and i content for that slot and get the things and it is something which is uh, very uh, means what we say simple or out of the three simple to implement and efficient for light loads if it is a heavy load and traffic etc need to be transmitted etc that may be a problem otherwise it is efficient so uh, if we look again the median cost method so there are two things which is predominant one is carrier sense multiple access with collision detection csma cd for bus topologies which are which we mostly see across us right uh, csma cd uh, there is another uh, thing which is still there but not so popular there is control token or token passing for bus and ring topologies right so this is also there but uh, not so um, popular these days so we are mostly on csma cd type of uh, architecture so in case of a csma cd used only in bus type of network where a number of nodes share a common communication path or bus or what we say communication media right so i have a communication path where the number of uh, nodes or number of systems or end system transmit through that bus that uh, it is the it, it is also the uh, technique in our traditional ethernet uh, connectivity right csma cd is the technique so what we say that it need to carry our sense it need to sense whether uh, is the whether there is a channel is free or not so there is a uh, whether the carrier is free or not it tends to sense there is a question of multiple access that number of thing can access at the same time there is a phenomena of collision that uh, party communicator may collide right and there is a, there should be a way to detect the collision and there should be a back off algorithm so once collision is there that should be a back off and retransmission so need to be jammed that, that there is a collision is occurred that do not transmit and there is a back off algorithm so after some time there should be a retransmission right so one is that i need to sense it one i should well, definitely there is a multiple access i need to sense it and if in spite of that there is a collision there should be a way to handle this collision uh, and retransmit the data in a uh, using some back of algorithm so if we look at the basic operation to transmit data the source station assembles a packet comprised of the destination address 
and the data and the control info at the layer 2 level. The source station listens to the cable or the transmission media to determine if the bus is currently is, is in use or not. If so, it waits until the bus is free else transmit else it transmit the packet right. So, if there it is free it transmit if it is not free it waits whether the bus is free and transmit the operation is known as the, the in the carrier sensing. So, it carrier sense if it is not free it wait for the time and if it is free it transmit the thing. During the transmission the source station continues to the listen to the cable or the media to detect if another station is also initiated transmission that causing a collision. So, it uh, look at the collision uh, things. So, collision and this process is a collision detection typically there is a if there is a collision there will be a fluctuation in the voltage level etcetera which uh, it the source station hardware should able to uh, uh, capture that and there is a what we say collision detection. If a collision has detected then to ensure all station are aware of the collision the source station transmit a random bit pattern known as jam sequence right. So, if the collision is detection, detected then other station will may also jumped into the thing right without knowing that collision is there and it will be more collision and things will be there. So, what it does source station that it, it sends a jam signal. So, random uh, bit pattern which is sends for the jam signal. The station involved in a collision then back off for a random period before retrying the packet for the transmission. So, the whichever station involved in this in a this uh, collision scenario will then back off for a random time period before retrying for uh, transmitting the packet right. So, that is the uh, fundamental way of this. So, let, let me just uh, um, uh, repeat the thing. The it assembles first of all the source station assemble the packets or it forms that MAC uh, level frame and then uh, look listens to the media if there is media is free it transmit if the media. So, this is the carrier sensing if it is not free it need to wait if it is once transmission if there is a collision usually detected by the fluctuation of the voltage the source station. Uh, go for a collision detection mechanism. If the collision is detected or collision has occurred, then uh, the source station send a random bin pattern or a jam signal jam sequence to alert other uh, station that there is a collision has occurred right. And uh, on listening that the the stations which are uh, preparing for uh, involved in this collision or preparing to transmit it will wait for a random back off time we will see that how things are there in the protocol thing. So, it is basically back off time before retransmitting or checking the again going to the loop checking the station and going on to the uh, transmitting the data. The same thing uh, so sensing if the idle transmit immediately if busy wait till the channel becomes idle collision detection abort a transmission immediately if the collision is detected try again later after waiting a random amount of time right. So, if we look at the sequence start then set back off to 0 if it is a persistent strategy then versus check that the what sort of persistent strategy is there send the frame if there is a collision uh, no then it is a success if this is a so transmission is there if there is a collision send jam signal uh, in that um, uh, LAN segment then there is increment the back off time and if the back off limit has not crossed then wait for the back off time and then retransmit right. The same thing if the limit has crossed then it about the thing right that how much time you can go on trying that if the limit has crossed then you say that uh, you about the connection or say that there is transmission link failure or something is not there. So, this is the way it uh, works uh, in case of a um, this when we transmit the things in a uh, collection detection in a multiple access uh, carrier sense multiple access with collision detection CSMA CD. Now, uh, when collection detection time how long does it take to realize that there is a collision? The worst case it may happen that two cross 
n to n propagation delay right. So, it is a n to n propagation delay twice that I uh, think then we can have this whether there is a collision uh, has occurred or not. So, that may be the uh, scenario which will be uh, there right. So, there is another protocol, but we have uh, just mentioned at the beginning which is which uh, is still there, but not so predominant, but just to have a overview of this sort of a uh, Mac level protocol. So, this control token or token passing another way of controlling access to the shared media is by control token or token passing. So, that means, whoever the in the control of the token has the right to transmit right. The control token technique uses a control or permission token to share the communication resource between the number of nodes. Right? That this technique can be applied to both bus and ring topology. So, this is the control token thing. This token is passed from one station to another according to a defined set of rules. So, that how this thing should be passed or shared it is a defined into the thing. So, a station may transmit a frame only when it possesses a token that means, you have a control of the token or token is in your hand then only the station can transmit the frame and after it has transmitted the frame it passes the token on to allow another station to grab the token and in turn uh, use that uh, media to transmit the data right. So, this is the basic philosophy which it works. So, in other sense we have a tokenization mechanism or a what we say control or permission token the station which has the control over the token or has the token in its hand has the way to transmit after transmission it uh, pass the token on. So, that the other contending uh, stations who wants to transmit can use this token to transmit. So, uh, control token operation whether the whether ring or bus topology a logical ring is established right because it has to go on uh, token in the sharing whether it is a physically uh, ring or bus topology there is a logical ring is uh, established uh, or the token moving or to token moving in the ring or token ring type of uh, scenario right so logical ring is established which uh, links the nodes using a physical media so, we will see in the next slide that what is the thing a uh, link control permission token is one node right. Uh, the, to a, the token is passed from node to node around the logical ring until it arrives the node waiting for the sender frame. So, that means, uh, it goes on moving in the node to node unless somebody grabs the token uh, into the uh, to transmit the data. The node captures the token has the control over the token and transmit the data upon completing the transmission the node releases the token to the next node in the logical ring. So, in the logical ring it so there are the nodes which are in the logical ring. So, once that is one ring gets the uh, transmission done it release the token in that logical ring. So, that is the things which you are talking of this. So, there is a logical ring is has been formed into the things a token always uh, circulates around a ring net a user grabs a token and transmit the data and this is the logical ring which is formed into the overall uh, scenario right. So, token is passed from one to another right. So, the way we discussed. So, if we try to look at the um, uh, that what we say flow of the thing. So, uh, uh, the wait for the a station need to wait for the token to come. Uh, once the token it uh, gets the token it captures or con have the control over the token. Then it uh, data uh, whether it has a data frame to send. So, it gets the token it so it has the control over the token if whether it has the it has the data frame to send if no then it is the token right to the next one in the ring or if yes uh, then send the frame accept the allocated time limit if it is expired uh, then it has to delete the token because it cannot indefinitely keep the token on its control it has the access there is a time limit for the things if it is not expired 
then uh, capture the uh, go to the things again go for the data to be sent etcetera. In other sense, so long it is the token is there till its time has expired it goes on uh, transmitting it goes on transmitting the data it wants to transmit. Once that is uh, once that time is expired then uh, it has to release the thing or its transmission over time is not expired it release the token to the next node in the logical ring. So, the if these three nodes are there if this is the way it is moving so it is uh, released to the next node next node next node in the logical ring. So, this was uh, uh, was in use rather some of the things are still in use, but now it is all uh, mostly over uh, mostly are ethernet based uh, services or CSMHDD based services what we see these days. So, there is another important aspect that how this addressing things can come up right communication involves uh, three things like one processes, stations, networks right the process to be there, the networks uh, is the process need to communicate between the processes and networks the two network two or more networks are there and the stations which are the in stations. Transfer of data from one process to another involves getting the data to the station in which the destination process resides and then getting it to the intended process within the computer right. So, if I want to transmit a data from the things. So, it has to go to that intended process and uh, execute into the thing. Two level of addressing here also one is the MAC address or the hardware address or what we sometimes call network address and there is a LLC addressing scheme where, where it tries to identify the network service point. So, if we look at LLC user data IP datagram are passed uh, down to LLC which appends a header to make the LLC PDU right. So, with the header it becomes a LLC protocol data unit. The LLC PDU is passed to the MAC entity which in turn appends the header and the tailor to make the MAC frame right. So, I the user data in this case user data in this case what it received from the upper layer say network layer and then it addresses the LLC header and create the LLC PDU. This LLC PDU now become the payload for the MAC. So, the MAC adds a header and a tailor and makes this MAC frame which need to be transmitted to the uh, next hop right where uh, the MAC header contains the de destination address that is the layer 2 address of the MAC address which need to be transmitted to the next hop. So, level of addressing so one is MAC addressing identify a physical interface from the from the station to the LAN right. So, it should be physically connected wired or wireless there is one or more relationship between the station and the physical uh, address. So, LLC address identify LLC user uh, LLC address or LSAP is associated with the uh, that is the service access point is associated uh, with a particular user within the station right and also the LLC service access point may refer to a process executing on a station or to a hardware port and type of things. That means, it is mostly talking with the upper layer type of uh, it is talking with the upper layer type of protocol with the LLC set. So, uh, what we see so three broad uh, classes or categories right. Uh, in case of if we look at the MAC protocols. Uh, so, one is channel partitioning right divide channel into smaller smaller piece either time sort or frequency the channel need to be partitioned allocate uh, piece to node for exclusive uh, use. So, I allocate the slots into different nodes either uh, through uh, a mechanism of CSMACD or token ring and type of things. So, this is one aspect like the channel need to be somewhat logically partitioned and things should be there. Other aspect is the random access allow collisions. So, allow collisions recover from collision right. So, one is allowing collision and recovering from the collision and uh, there is a shared access tightly coordinate 
shared access to avoid collision right so that is a more coordinated effort uh, to avoid collision right so these are the three what we say uh, aspects of uh, mac clear protocol which is an uh, which is on to achieve the basic uh, philosophy or the basic uh, um, goal of this thing is that uh, it should be efficient fair simple and decentralized right so efficient fair uh, efficient means that channel is utilized efficiently fair means it is fair to all the nodes in the uh, in that uh, lan like it is not uh, giving any extra preference to the other things right it should be simple to implement finally end of the day it is these devices are not that high resource devices so simple to implement so simple and as far as possible it should be decentralized decentralized that no, uh, there should not be any centralized control over these uh, mechanisms right so that should be uh, decentralized uh, type of things so what we say efficient simple and decentralized this these are the things which it any mac protocol tries to achieve so uh, what we will uh, what we have seen a uh, overall mechanisms uh, overall basic uh, philosophy of that how this layer 2 data link layer uh, protocols works so llc and mac and uh, how what are the different technique like csma cd is the predominant technique which is uh, ethernet uses also there is a token link technique uh, things are there and the mac protocol as such want to become efficient fair to all simple protocol and decentralized so with this let us conclude our discussion today we will continue our uh, discussion in the on this uh, layer 2 or data link layer in our subsequent lectures thank you